documenting clinical science has played an important role in the evolution of ophthalmology. From an artist's impression of clinical science to high quality images, clinical documentation has helped the ophthalmologist to understand diseases, monitor outcomes and educate patients. Till few years ago, documenting clinical science in ophthalmology, especially fundus documentation was expensive. Recently, smartphones have been used extensively in capturing fundus images as well as in anterior segment photography. All of us have smartphones with high quality cameras. Most of these phones have numerous connectivity options like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, screen mirroring, 3G and 4G networks. These qualities of the smartphone make them useful in an ophthalmologist's clinical practice. Nowadays, we have the option of using a do-it-yourself adapter or commercially available adapters for smartphone ophthalmic imaging. Both the do-it-yourself and commercially available ones are capable of capturing good quality images for anterior segment, like this congenital zonal cataract, and posterior segment, as in this montage of regress retinopathy of prematurity with temporal drag of macula and the vessels. This is a do-it-yourself slit lamp smartphone attachment made from commonly available material, thus making it a cost-effective option. It is attached to the back cover of the phone and the entire assembly is fixed to the eyepiece of the slit lamp. These are few of the anterior segment images taken with the smartphone. This is a patient with pseudo-exfoliation. One can make out the yak iridectomy. This patient has feathering of the posterior subcapsular area, commonly seen in a gas-filled eye after vitrectomy. In this eye, post-cataract surgery with microbiologically proven candida endophthalmitis, the beaded appearance of the candida colony is evident. This eye had hypotony after cataract surgery and kissing choroidals. In this magnified view of the site of incision, one can make out that the haptic is in between the two lips of the incision, thus leading to a wound leak and hypotony. This is a rare instance of hyperolion or inverse hypopion with pigmented emulsified silicon oil bubbles. This dislocated IOL has few silicon oil droplets on its surface. Stereophotography is also possible as seen in this patient with postoperative endophthalmitis. Another advantage of smartphone imaging is cost-effective video documentation. Here is a patient with persistent hyaluronic artery. In this gonioscopy video, the ciliary processes are clearly made out through the dialysis in a patient with angle recession and iridodialysis following blunt trauma. This is a patient with neovascular glaucoma. Neovascularization of the pupillary margin is evident in this photograph taken with the smartphone. Gonioscopy video shows open angle with new vessels in the angle. And couple of goniosinic. Using a condensing lens and a continuously on flash on the phone, smartphones can be used to capture high quality fundus images. The optical principle of smartphone fundus photography is similar to monoocular indirect of thermoscopy. A cost effective do it yourself retinal camera adapter can also be used for fundus photography. Excellent images can be captured with this technique as seen in these photographs. It's a handy device that is portable and can be used for imaging pediatric cases as well as in screening for retinopathy of prematurity. Here is an image of a neonate with multiple retinal hemorrhages secondary to thrombocytopenia. 
This neonate has stage 2 retinopathy of prematurity with popcorn lesion. This is a montage of a neonate with aggressive posterior retinopathy of prematurity. This is probably the only picture in ophthalmic literature showing the close-up view of vascular loops in APROP and this was taken with the direct cam. Smartphone based ophthalmic imaging is cost effective, portable and has the ability to connect to various devices and networks. The images can be sent over the internet or on a cross-platform messaging service as encrypted messages. These qualities make it an ideal device for teleophthalmology. In teleophthalmology, images and clinical data are transmitted over a secured connection from the peripheral or outreach center to a tertiary center where the specialist ophthalmologists interpret the images and correlate it with the clinical data. They then arrive at a diagnosis and advise the consultant at the peripheral center on the management options. Smartphones can make teleophthalmology cost effective. This is a photograph of wet AMD with submacular hemorrhage. This image was captured on the smartphone using the direct cam. The images were then edited on the smartphone. A montage was created from three such images on the smartphone. The image was then sent by email over a 2G connection to the editor of Kerala Journal of Ophthalmology as the cover picture of the journal's first online issue, thereby highlighting the role of smartphones in teleophthalmology. As in anterior segment, video documentation is possible with smartphone fundus imaging. Here is a patient with choroidal metastasis just superior to the disc. Note the pulsations over the disc and the exudative retinal detachment. This is a patient with avulsed retinal vessel and zonal attraction tuft. Peripheral video documentation of such high quality is possible with this cost effective technique. This is probably the only video showing an aura serrata pearl, a clinical curiosity and this was captured by the direct cam. And the future of smartphone retinal imaging could be 